Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. What I'm going to be talking about is lighting, and it's going to be in two parts. One part I'm going to talk about different kinds of lighting, what you should look for, and maybe I could save you a few bucks on lighting, and you'll think about it. Instead of having uh, um, buying something, using it for a while, and then it sits in the closet because you either didn't buy enough lighting or it's not the right kind of light, lighting that it could to could carry you on to a different fish tank. In this hobby, we may start out with a 20-gallon tank, like this antique tank that's sitting next to me, it's 20 gallon. You may start out with something like that, but then you may graduate into a bigger, better tank. And uh, a lot of people may not want two, three tanks, and they just go to a bigger tank, but they can't use the equipment that they bought for the smaller tank and it gets packed away in the attic or in the basement. Okay, so what we're gonna do is strip lights. We got a strip light here. This is a blue well. It's a 3.0, it's a 32 watt, 6,500 K, 24 to 34 inches um, is what it will expand to. Now, basically, Manufacturers aren't stupid. They, they've done everything to keep things under control. Um, they know they give you the right kind of light. Light usually between 5,000K to 7,000K is good for fresh water. And it depends on the color you want. But that spectrum is going to give you enough for your chlorophyll A and your chlorophyll B. So if it falls in that, spectrum, you're going to be rest assured it, it'll be good enough for your aquatic plants. Don't have to make a big deal out of it. That's what it's going to be. These lights, they give you a lot of bells and whistles, though, where a long time ago, you would just get a, a hood and a light. Light would come in a Grolux bulb, and uh, let's say you had a 55-gallon. It would be a four-foot Grolux bulb. That's what you standard got. You wanted to change it to a different color. You had to buy a different bulb or add more bulbs to your aquarium if you decided to um, go with a planted aquarium. But the Grolux bulb was good enough and, and really enhanced the colors, but it wasn't very good for plants. Very, but And it even had the word Grolux in it, but it really wasn't for very good for aquatic plants, more for terrestrial plants, that bulb was. But anyway, for aquatic plants, anything between 5,000 to 7,000 in that is, is Great. So manufacturers are making all the lights to hit that 6,500 K Kelvin degrees. So you got the light spectrum where you want. Then they customize it, give you all kinds of bells and whistles. You can tweak them, more blue, more red. But basically for our freshwater plants, we like the greens and yellows, and then we want the red. This is where you're going to hit your chlorophyll fill A and then you're going to, and the reds hit your chlorophyll B. The reds are going to have to be lower because you don't want to uh, cause any problems with algaes and stuff. Blues are not really highly desirable for freshwater aquariums. Saltwater, yes. Freshwater, no. Because they will enhance a lot of your algaes that we have problems with. So you get something like this. Okay, this is a strip light, two foot strip light. Or, or, you know, we could definitely buy something like this, this Radeon, okay? Comes with two sets of LEDs, comes with a muffin fan because these, this is a very bright light. And this, the Fluval I just showed you is 32 watts. Well, something like this is 195 watts. Now, when you get to 195 watts of LEDs, you're equaling this to... Um, I think I, I've done this before and showed you 195 watts of LED equals this. This is metal halide. Metal halide, this does this part of the metal halide does not light up. All that lights up is the little corona that's in here. It lights up. So basically, it's almost like uh, condensing all your LEDs all in one spot. The trouble with this is it's as bright as this uh, radion. Okay, they both put out about 
16,000 luminous looms, okay, both of these do. The difference between the two of these is, well, this one costs a lot more than this, okay, that's one disadvantage, but the difference between these two is this gets very, very hot. And I think these run at about in here 400 degrees. And I think the fixture, I put it on my aquarium. I'll show you pictures of it. Um, same brightness, at least from my eyes, what I'm looking at. But the whole trouble is it really got hot. And this is the thing you had to deal with. So we don't have to deal with this with these metal halides. This is a 400 watt. There's things about lights, though, that we have to remember that let's say you had a 600 watt metal halide, you can use two 300 watts and that would equal one 600 watt, okay? So if you double your light, it will equal the higher next step up of your lighting. Now, when we get to something like this or the Kessel lights, which are very good lights, and there's a lot of good lights out there. I'm just using these examples. Um, the Kessel light, I think that tuna uh, sun is uh, 40 watt, okay, and uh, I've heard nothing but great reviews of the Kessel. I wish I could try out a Kessel. I really do, but at $300 a pop for the tuna sun, I would need at least, for my 36 tank, at least two of them, and, you know, you're talking 600 bucks, uh, that's kind of expensive. Something like this is also expensive. This is a real expensive light. And when you get in these higher output lights like this, uh, muffin fans are going to have to be applied to keep them cool. That's just the way it is. These get very hot because they're putting a lot of high output lighting. And um, Kessel also runs muffin fans in their lighting. But the strip lights usually don't come with a muffin fan, you know. And these now are being designed in aluminum because we know aluminum will attract the heat and expel the heat very quickly. So that's one thing they're making all light fixtures out of it is aluminum. A lot of them are making them waterproof. Now the problem is with this, and this is the problem that everyone gets into when you buy a light. You, you look at the luminous, you say, oh, 2350. Wow, that's a lot of luminous. Ooh, but that's 2350 for the whole entire light. Divide that in half. Go 12 inches and 12 inches, and really you got uh, only 1175 luminous per 12 inches if you want to look at it that way. So it's not as much light as you thought. And if you start adding plants in there and stuff, the light itself can become less. Because if you think about this, you think about something like this, and if you figure about like one foot would be 1100. You get a light bulb like this, let's say. This is a 100 watt light bulb. This is putting 1600 looms for 100 watts. So this, technically speaking, puts out more light for one bulb than the Fluval does. Okay, this may look brighter when you look at it, because I've seen a lot of videos where they look at it, oh, it's bright. Even a LED flashlight's bright. But this is brighter, one of these bulbs here. In fact, I have videos of a long time ago where I actually made lighting out of just off-the-shelf light bulbs that were 150 watt. They put over 2,000 uh, looms out. And I had that, and I was growing... Uh, and that tank depth was at least 18 inches also. And I was growing baby tear at the very bottom. Or Monte Carlo. And it grew just fine. Only using off-the-shelf light bulbs. And the only thing I think I show in the video, I used to uh, cut off this part. So you just had all the LEDs exposed. And you can watch those old videos. The trouble is today, they don't really sell light bulbs that are in the color temperature that we need for our aquariums. Okay, uh, like this one says 3000K. So, uh, it will probably grow plants, okay, to be honest with you, but uh, they used to make lights that 
we're closer to what we want it and very, very bright. So if you think about it, if you got something like this, and this is two foot, I'm just giving you this example. We know there's about 1100 looms per half of this light. Okay, it's not 2000 all the way through the light. It doesn't work that way. If you literally got a can and you got a light bulb and put it over here, you'd actually put more light in your aquarium and it would save you money in the long run. And you wouldn't have to buy more strip lights if you decided you want to go with uh, plants and have a planted aquarium. So it's something to think about. However, we can get over that hurdle as hobbyists by buying something like this, the, the Radiant, okay, or a Kessel. Are something similar. Now this is going to be more like a light bulb. It's going to sh shine like each one of these. It's got two of them. Okay, each one of these sections put out 8,000 looms. Okay, so that's basically how much light is coming down that's going to be usable light to get to the bottom of your aquarium. The trouble with something like this also falls into as plants grow, like my 90 gallon. My 90 gallon is uh, 11 months old. It's almost a year old. And it's running into problems of plants have grown to the point where this light, as strong as it is, because I already tested it with the LA, is making shadows on the sides of the tank. So I'm losing light at the bottom. I'm losing light at plants that need light. And the only choice I have is one, you either buy more lights, two, take the tank and start trimming things, or tear the tank down and rearrange it. And I don't want to do that because the tank's running just fine, perfect. So you have a choice. Uh, what do you do if you need more light? Do you start buying more strip lights? So these come in handy, okay, but you may need more than one as time goes on. Much like that of saltwater aquariums, they realize as the, their corals grow and they get more coral, they realize they may need to put another light in their tank. That's no different than us. So the thing about the strip lights is, and I thought I would tell you, i give you an example that this is 1175. You could say 1175 per half light, but let's go to the Flowwool four foot light. Okay, the four foot light puts out, uh, boom, 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 it puts out 4,250 looms. Okay, and you're thinking, wow, that's a lot more than this. But let's divide that looms up into sections, which means you would only be getting a 1,062 per foot, a lot less than this light puts out per foot. So you see how they do things, the manufacturers are doing things. You're, you're getting less looms per foot at a bigger light. And the thing of it is, and here's the real bad part of it, is that four foot over 200 some dollar light that you put on, strip light that you put on, is that really better than what we used to use years ago? And the truth of it is no. Actually, years ago, the fluorescent lights that we used had as many or more luminous output than these new lights have. In fact, you can buy fluorescent lights that were considered high output, and that high output light could put out over 5,000 luminous. And then you had very high output lights that would put out even six to 7,000 looms for that four foot, okay? That's all gonna cost you more money. So you have to think about what are you buying when you first buy it? And I'm using the 55 because usually to light smaller tanks, it's not a problem. It's only when you start getting into the 55 gallon, 75 gallon, okay. NASA, we have a problem. Now you have to start thinking, what am I going to buy so I don't 
have to keep buying more and more. And we've seen you've seen videos where they have lights and they may have to buy a second strip or third strip because they realize I don't have enough light over this 55 or 75 or my 90, whatever you're doing. So that's why I'm doing this video to kind of educate you on the different lights. Before I end this video, I'm going to talk about one more thing. That is something that this is this light right here is a work light. I bought at Lowe's. I don't know, maybe I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. It's it's almost four years old. It's made out of aluminum. It's heavy. Uh, it's a very bright light. And what it uses in here is something that uh, I think will be the future of aquarium lighting. And this is called a cob light inside here. If you look inside, there's a just a yellow dot, big, huge yellow dot. It looks like it could be uh, seven eighths in diameter. And it's got a lens on it, curvature lens, just like the Radeon has, just like Kessel has. Uh, this is nothing new to make a curvature on light. Nothing new, been around for years. Anyhow, these cobs, which uh, stands for Cob stands for chip on board. Okay, that's what a cob is, a chip on board. And they're very high output. And this seems to be something that hobbies for the past few years have been buying these cob lights. And there is a cob light. It's a 3590. That's the number of it. I think you can buy it on Amazon. It's a 3590 Cree, that's C-R-E-E, -E, cob light. You can buy it's a chip and you can take that chip and that one little chip maybe it's an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter okay that's where it gets a chip on board much like this and that puts out 20,000 luminous so it puts out more light than both of these here that one little cob and it puts out more light than that halite I showed you. In fact, it, it's more in the territory of a 600 watt um, metal halite. And uh, that's quite a lot of light. If you put two of the little cobs together, you can have, what, 40,000 luminous. You don't need to worry about a par meter. Believe me, you're going to have more than enough light. But, I mean, these things are very bright. They're, they're excellent for working. Uh, you can buy them. The, here's the problem with cobs. They're very extremely hot. They burn themselves out. And if you buy some of these, they're made out of aluminum. They have fins. This has fins on it. This is to dissipate the heat away from the cob. And if you don't get that heat away from the cob, it's going to burn up the cob. And it's going to start having little... It's made of little squares, and you're going to start burning these squares out, and it will shorten the light. Another thing about these lights, which I know they're cheap. A lot of people like to use them for their aquarium or have used them for their aquarium. They get very hot. Second, they're not designed to run like 6, 8, 10 hours a day, 365 days a year. They're not designed to run like that. Cobs, if, if anyone knows electronics, you know that cobs need a muffin fan to keep them cool, or they're going to need a cooling block, which is an aluminum block, has it in and out, where you put hoses onto them, sends the water through the block, the cob goes on top of there, keeps the cob cool, dissipates the heat away from the cob. If you don't do this with cobs, um, to keep them cool, they would just burn themselves out eventually. They won't last very long. And this is what happens. This, I think, will be the future of, I think, aquariums, cob lights, will be the future. But, unfortunately, to get around the heat so it doesn't burn up the cob, you're going to have to go to a fan arrangement. So, I've given you a little idea about... When you buy lights and you're looking at loom, luminous output, uh, you're looking at the same thing we looked at 40, 50 years ago. 
forget about par. Par is par is for somebody else's tank. It's not for your tank because you don't have the plants they have. Your turbidity could be different than what they have. So you're getting a guesstimate of what light output is. Luminous is luminous. It never changes. So if you want more light, you just buy another light and you can double your luminous output and then take it per foot and just figure out, I have this much luminous per foot of my aquarium and you'll be good to go. So the review is going to be about a uh, Asta 120 light that I've been testing out. I bought these lights. It's not a paid review or anything. And I'm trying to see how these lights are, which are relatively in the uh, ballpark of Kessel lights. And that will be in part two. And I think if uh, this video was a little boring to you, I don't think you're going to want to miss part two because I'm going to get into the light. I'm going to show you how it looks on the inside. We're going to explain to you that is uh, the Asta 120 is not a cob light. It is still made up of smaller, you know, LED diodes. Okay. They also use a technology of the Kessel and the lens. They also use that same technology. And um, I think you'll be very interested in that. If you're thinking about you have a 55 gallon or something else, you're going to be very interested in that second video. That's one you're not going to want to miss. Before you run out and buy one of these, watch part two. Really, save your money. Just hold on. After you listen to part two, then you can judge whether or not uh, what you want to do. But uh, that's going to be in part two. So thank you very much for watching. I hope I explained a little bit of how we would judge thing with the 12-12 ratio. Just take your light, divide it. And if you have a two foot, 12-12, that's going to be your luminous output per foot. If it's three foot, uh, like uh, they, they make a three foot, I think that's 3,300 looms or 1,100 per foot. That's the way you got to kind of look at it, people. There is a formula, too. I'll tell you the formula. The formula to find out par is you take the looms and times it by 0 0.015, and you'll come out with your par. And uh, you want a par like par from 0 to, th to 230 is, is low, okay? And from 30 to 60 is medium light, and from 60 on up is high light. So that's how you want to run it. But let's face facts. You get enough luminous output in there, you know, uh, you're going to have high par. It, it just, you know, it, it reminds me of my physics teacher when he told us, you know, you want horsepower, you go with cubic inches. And that's the way it is with aquariums. You want horsepower, you want light, you go with more looms. The more looms you're going to be putting into your aquarium, you're going to get the light. You don't even need a par meter. You're going to get the light. Trust me. Doing this a long time. That's how we did it. We didn't have all these meters telling us anything. You want more light? Add another light. You're going to get more looms per square foot of your aquarium. And depth really makes a big difference, people. 12 inches is great. 12 inches is nothing like uh, the aquarium for the goldfish. But once you start getting into 15 inches, 16, 17, 18, 19, you need just more and more light. You really need to pound that light in there. And that's just the way it is. So and until next time, thank you very much for watching.